poof, we've grown an inverter. So this is an uh, MPP, MPP Solar uh, MPI Hybrid 10 kilowatt free phase inverter that can do everything I need it to. Or if uh, we are to believe a label, it's uh, an Infinisolar 10k par B, but uh, I think that's because uh, due to shipping issues, due to the whole uh, thing in the world right now, they just uh, sold me an unbranded unit uh, instead of one that's uh, got the MP MPP Solar logo on it. Uh, but uh, I've actually just worked this up for a test run. I've uh, checked that it works with just a long extension cord going uh, to a workbench and it does power on, it does protect power. Uh, we obviously don't have any of the actual site wiring, none of the free faces in here yet, but I wanna see how well this thing is gonna perform uh, because uh, one of my motivations for making this entire thing is that about um, two years ago, uh, the neighbors installed a giant big house full of fans, fans powered by very cheap VFDs, causing a huge amount of distortion on the power grid in my area. Now I complained to the power company, they came, they put a meter on um, in, in my house and they went, oh yeah, that's a bit too much distortion, we're gonna investigate. And uh, a year later they made it so that the machine is only turned on at night when I'm awake and uh, there's still a huge amount of distortion of the grid, making things like power transformers very loud and obnoxious to be around in the house. Uh, so having my own power plant would of course rectify that issue if this thing can put out clean enough power. Uh, so the way my current setup is set up, uh, this is actually <laughs> the power cord that's feeding my entire workshop upstairs is going to a big UPS over there, which is a uh, line interactive, not double conversion, so that does not help. But with this extension cord <laughs> going into the giant three phase connector on the bottom of this unit, uh, we should be able to power my workshop. Uh, so, what's going on wiring wise? Uh, this is obviously just a bit of a play around sesh. Uh, I've got new toys, I wanna see what they can do. Yeah, so I've got two uh, 70 square mil uh, grinding wires uh, used to power the inverter. This is not up to code. I, I was gonna buy uh, new wiring, uh, similar to the stuff I've used here, but funny, 50 square mil is uh, seemingly rather difficult. Everyone's using either 35 or 70, and I wanna use uh, redundant uh, 50 square mil all the way to the inverter, and I don't think I can fit 70. Oh well, uh, I have installed these very dodgy jumpers just going between bank one and bank two uh, to make sure we don't uh, unbalance the packs, because if I, since so I've only got two wires going to the inverter, we can only go to one of the battery bank terminals here, uh, and uh, if I were to do that, the other one would be going through this mess of wiring and out of there, with a voltage drop, possibly putting these wires on fire if I draw too much current and possibly unbalancing the two banks and balance charging these is, you know, not something you want to do since they are giant batteries. But this should be wired up correctly. Everything's turned off right now. We have positive going to positive, going to the rear wire, going all the way. Over that, over that, over that, to positive. And then the negative goes, follow them. You don't wanna mess this up. We have a lot of energy again. Goes to the one close towards me away from the wall. That goes to battery one negative going to battery two negative and the other jumpers, battery one negative to battery two negative. So this should not go on fire when we flick either of these. We, so I've got my current clamp going into the inverter. Let's see what it does. Might be able to break it as well. So this thing should now be able to power on. Oh, that, let's uh, actually turn that on. I don't remember how you're supposed to do this. It's I think that means it's uh, trying to power on. Oh yeah, it's drawing. 
a few amps. Three point nine amps. These are uh, downside of these uh, this particular number of inverters. They're supposedly not very uh, efficient at idle, and that does seem to be what we're seeing uh, idling at uh, almost four amps. Well, that's about two hundred watts of idle uh, power consumption going into this thing, which is you know. Meh. But when you're powering a great big house with you know practically free energy it's it, it's it's not like it's not going to ruin the value of this inverter since it's such a cheap inverter for what it does i'd have to pay three times as much uh, to get one that's uh, as good but yeah there we go oh let's it's mounted now so we can do ah oh, sexy I do like the little custom LCD they have. It's very sharp and uh, easy to read. So, I have my little power meter here. We should, it's gonna be putting out. Yeah, that's probably 230 volts flat with uh, most of the error being in the meter. So let's see what happens if we get some load on this thing. I haven't tried this with more than 650 watts before because uh, I was using a very long thin extension cord. Now we can shove it with a full, with a two kilowatt heater. Fan on. Twenty-five watts. Twenty-one watts. Fans are spinning up on the inverter. 670 watts. Let's do the full thing. Oh, now we're taking off. Two kilowatt load. Room is starting to smell like new inverter. And uh, this thing sits on the 59% load, which is not true. I'm gonna hope that that's the peak load on each of the faces, but we have more than two kilowatts per face. That's weird, I'm gonna to have to check the manual for that. We're drawing 45.7 amps. Is anything going on fire? It's a big question, I haven't loaded any of this wiring down this hard before. But nothing seems to be going on fire. I would expect my wiring to keep up. And our output wiring, keeping in mind with uh, output voltage, keeping in mind we're hooked to a terrible extension cord from probably the 80s. This is 230 volts, flat on, spot on. Now let's uh, turn this off and on, see how it responds. So that's two kilowatts on and off. It's not uh, doing anything terrible as far as the meter is concerned. Not too shabby. So we have a big inverter, but we don't have any free phase wiring. So how do we properly load test this thing? Well, I present to you the free phase in NATO. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is just a free uh, standard issue uh, extension cord that I've wired up to the output plug that goes back in the inverter. So, in each of these we have a different phase and uh, by using three different loads we can put this thing to quite a test since these are 1.5 square mil extension cords they're usually rated for uh, 3500 watts uh, 13 amps usually uh, so the inverter can put out a maximum of 
uh, amps per face so we're almost legal running this like this there should be breakers and shit in between but you know what you're gonna do we don't got all day well we do but never mind that so uh, let's turn this off just to make sure we don't have any short circuits it's better to let it uh, explode any problems uh, during power up rather than in my hand. There we go. I present to you a uh, some power convector heater two beautiful vintage room room heaters. Let's turn up the temp. So that's about two kilowatts, that's about two kilowatts, that's I think 1650. And uh, to top things off, we have a variable power vacuum cleaner that's up to 1.5 kilowatts. So this thing is loud and it has ho horrible drive because it's just a light dimmer in serial with a motor and these old things. Uh, we should also have, if it hasn't broken again, nope, we've got feedback. So we've got our output power there. Let's start heating things up. So we want to have the meter on. Zero that. So this is going to be the first actual high current test of this battery bank. I have not tested this at more than like 10 amps before. It was up to 60 when I was playing around, but uh, let's just start for turning things on. So that's two kilowatts, I think. 2.2. Four kilowatts. Update. Yeah, two kilowatts per phase total. 4.2 kilowatts. So this is the highest load I've had on these batteries ever. 93 amps. So nothing should be going on fire. There's warm air flowing everywhere from <laughs> the hot air fans. This room is heating up quite quickly. So these are a bit of a concern, but uh, no problems. They're really cold. No heat in the battery jumpers. Oh god, it's getting hot in here. More power! So that's the third phase, convective heater. Powering up at uh, 1500 watts. The inverter was making a horrid noise. And it stopped, thankfully. So we're at 5600 watts. It says 65% load, which is roughly correct. 127 amps load on the batteries. So we should be good for about 200 amps on these wires, as long as no interconnect is gonna go on fire. Let's uh, see if we're balanced. 61.3 from that one. 66.6 .6 from that one and we would expect uh, this one to put out slightly more because we're connected to its uh, terminal block there the other one's jump it across so it's going to have a bit more voltage drop there's heat coming out of this thing so here comes the vacuum cleaner lowest power We're now up to over six kilowatts. Six point five kilowatts. Seventy six percent load. 
150 amps. We've got uh, 47 volts at things at the terminals, but that's measured right here. So there's a fair amount of the voltage drop included in that. Let's turn it up. Full power! <laughs> 7 kilowatts, and I think that's the highest I can get it. Because I'm out of heaters. Well, I could fetch another vacuum cleaner, I suppose. We're drawing 163 amps. Let's see our battery voltage. 47.67 And let's do that Without the uh, wiring loss, uh, you're going to have to take my word for this. So what's that? It's uh, 47.8 volts at the terminals for the battery that's uh, working a bit harder. And that would be... At 80 amps of load. Jesus. Oh, that thing turned off. The inverter started making noise. <laughs> so it's warming up in here, I think. On you go. I want to see the power. Eighty-three amps. Seventy-nine. Other both basics are going to be at forty-eight volts, nominal. I think that's all right. Let these guys cool off for a second. I don't want to. Overheat my vintage heaters. God is hot in here. It's like the middle of freaking summer. I would say that's a reasonable test. We got up to over seven kilowatts. Nothing went on fire. The batteries put out very well indeed. Now we could be a little rude and uh, do that and now we're gonna be loading down only one of the batteries now we want to be trimming that up to 160 amps because we don't want to actually trip this because this is a 160 amp breaker at most but now we can really stress just one of these for a little bit. So let's, uh, where'd the clamp go? Let's, let's rig this up a bit better. There we go. So we're running on only one bank and that's our, our battery voltage at the terminals. That's our battery current. So let's start turning things on. We don't want to go too high since uh, we have a 160 amp limit. We really don't want to go over that because that's going to cause a huge arc in the breaker. So that's at 100 amps. So I don't want to get too close to even past 100. So I don't think we're going to do the vacuum clean. Let's do 650 watts on that guy. 112. Let's do 850. 116 amps. That is actually a bit of a lower battery voltage than 
uh, I would like to see, given the size of these batteries, they're not under a huge amount of load, but uh, these have not been used a lot in the past, so they're barely commissioned. So we've got 47.0 there, and 46.2 according to this, but uh, I know this guy has a tendency to read a bit low. It's uh, been lying to me in the past. Yeah. Sometimes it starts making this horrible inverter noise. It just really takes me off guard. Oh, I think we're seeing the batteries start to swing back. So the voltage is flattening out and soon the voltage is going to keep... It starts going back up if we let it just sit for a while. It's slowing down. Really would have expected a higher, higher terminal voltage. I'm, I'm a bit concerned about that. But it's working and yeah, I want to quit. I'm dying of overheating in here. God, so warm. But it feels so good. Now, while uh, that was a very a successful couple of tests, uh, these wires are not going to last uh, for a couple of reasons. I want to have all these terminals populated. I want to run quad wires to the inverter to reduce voltage drop. Uh, I don't want to live with these forever. Uh, and uh, these are obviously ground wires and they're just 70 square mils. Uh, 70 square mil is good for uh, about 210 amps-ish. And uh, if I set these to the lowest possible value, uh, we have a total combined uh, breaker current setting of 250 amps. Uh, so I'd have to set up to like a hundred square mil uh, for that to be acceptable because we don't want to be in a scenario where uh, any condition can cause overcurrent in these wires uh, and the subsequent overheating uh, with dripping plastic on things and burning copper and glowing things which should not be glowing. Uh, so we have some things in the works. Uh, namely, some adapters because the inverter, they, they MPP saw or specify 85 square mils for your connecting wires and that's even a bit of a low side since uh, 85 square mils is I think it's rated for 240 amps. Now that's not really. It's enough for the current of the inverter, but not enough for our breakers. So I need to run, really do need to run a quad wires, and I have purchased for more money than I would have liked uh, 10 meters of 70 square mil wire. And to make myself able to run them, this is what I've come up with. I had a bunch of this. Uh, 100 square mil copper bus bar lying around. So I just cut up a piece of that and we've got uh, two cable shoes mounted too. Uh, and uh, that's gonna bolt onto the terminals here. I'm gonna have to cover this up. Hopefully I'll have some shrink wrap that's large enough. And then we're gonna have our dual 70 square mil wiring for a total of 140 uh, going to the breaker box. And uh, that should be uh, good for up to well over 300 amps. So I can blow the well crank these guys up to their maximum setting if I so want to, but I don't want to, we don't need that much current. Uh, so uh, cable mounting wise, uh, I tried to catch uh, the supply store, local supply store today, didn't have a chance, uh, but I think I'm gonna get some uh, wall mounts, uh, the ones that are like a little bracket you bolt into the wall and then you uh, have plastic that slides uh, on each side of the wire. Gonna run four wires just along the wall beside each other and up in here. Uh, so that's going to be quite a bit more wire than we need to, rather than going the ugly bird route, I could like take some wiring harness thing and just go straight across there, but that just looks terrible, so I'm not going to do that. And uh, I might even actually, if I have a presence of mind in the store, I'll just grab another one of the uh, whole cable holder things to hold these guys as well to make that look a bit nicer that's fine <laughs> but it's not a beautiful solution uh, but yeah we need to uh, start making our wires and 
there's going to be some crimping, some cutting involved. I re need, really need to be sure I don't cut my wires too short uh, since I don't have a mains yet. So I'll have to see what I do. But the important thing is we have these guys. <laughs> 